next speaker is Julie McNeil. Julie is a successful financial planner and owner of McNeil Financial Services in American Court. In her spare time, she loves to travel the world and is currently writing a book about her life. This is Julie's fifth project in the Competent Communications Manual, Your Body Speaks, titled Nature versus Nurture. Five to seven minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Nature versus nurture. That's actually something that's been studied for centuries. This one here is a 50-year study on twins, trying to decide whether nature or nurture really, which influences your personality, your traits, your diseases most. Well, what they finally decided on this study, it's a wash. It's equal which one influences it. Now why I bring this subject up and why I thought of this subject is it's actually something I've thought about my entire life. I was adopted as a baby, two days old with mom and dad. Brought this long skinny thing home from the hospital. <laughs> had the longest fingers and toes my aunt had ever seen. She said to my mom, this girl's going to be tall. No, I doubt she thought this tall. But it was obvious I was going to be tall. As I started growing, at six months, my mom tells me, I started flirting. Anybody walk by, I'd bat my big brown eyes at that. She's like, this is weird. My other kids don't do this. At two, you know the stranger danger? They were starting to teach that to kids when we were little. That didn't work on me. I talked to anybody that would talk to me. Still to this day, I remember friends telling my ex before we got married, look out for her. She'll talk to a wall if it'll talk back. <laughs> I love to talk. As I got a little older, you know, I was raised LDS, but I hated church. It bored the crap out of me. Mom would take me to primary, sit me down, well, actually stand in the door, and she'd go off to wherever it was that she was supposed to go. And then, not very plaintively, I would sneak out the back door of church and go to my friend's house. Oh, Oh, was I a bad kid? <laughs> Mom never knew. To this day, I still don't think she knows. As I started to get older, and Mom was one of those people that are very controlling. She'd say to me, you can't ride a bike, you're going to fall and break your arm. Really? You can't swim, you might drown. Really? Well, I decided to prove her wrong. I got a bike. I learned how to ride and I raced every kid in the neighborhood and won almost every race. I was this little speed demon. So as I got older, I started realizing I was that square peg in the round hole. Wasn't a whole lot like my biological family. In fact, my mom's 5'4", my dad's about 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 my sister's 5'4", next one's 5'6", my older brother is 5'8". <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't fit in. So getting diagnosed with a liver disease a couple of years ago, I set out to find my biological family so that I could tell them about this disease so they also could be tested for it to see if they have it. Well, a year and a half ago, I found them. Now this has been a really interesting adventure, not only being able to tell them about the disease and to tell you how much genetics play into the diseases. This disease is you get one gene from each parent Obviously, I got both genes, so I have the disease. And there's a level to how much your body produces this protein and a level to amount that it doesn't. Well, when I found my biological family, my parents got married after I was put up for adoption and I have two full sisters. They both have the disease. All three of our levels are exactly the same. So we are all just carbon copies of each other that way. Now, they're not quite as tall as me, they're 5'10 and 5'8, because my biological mother is also 5'4. My biological father is 6'7. Don't know where. We all laughed at something somebody said that was funny. Our laugh went up 
it stopped exactly the same. It came down, stopped exactly the same. You thought it was one person that laughed. And I went, oh my gosh, I laugh like you guys. Do you know how excited it is? Because everybody knows me for my laugh. People talk to me on the phone and they don't know who I am until I laugh. Oh, it's Julie, I know your laugh. It's interesting to finally have someone I laugh like. Now, as I talk to them a little bit more, another reason I hated church was, you know, meetings were boring. My little ADD brain wanted to go do something else, fun. I hated wearing dresses. All four, my mom, my sisters, and I hate dresses. I wore a dress twice, all the way from kindergarten to senior high school, only because mom made me. I hate dresses. Guess what? My sisters and my mom don't even own dresses. My sisters and my mom don't go to church. My sisters and my mom and I have never carried a purse. We carry a little tiny wallet in our pocket. I've never met these people and I'm just like them. <laughs> my sister starts saying certain words and she says them exactly like I do. So I've never met these people. I wasn't raised by these this family but I am so much like them it's spooky but yet I'm still a combination of my family that raised me my mom is one of those disciplinarians you live by the book you do everything perfect well I kind of rebelled on that but now I am very prompt I'm always on time always do what needs to be do, done first before I go and play my sisters and my mom scatterbrains always late always losing things Never really care. Oh, we'll get there if we get there. So I've got some of the discipline and personality of my family that raised me and a lot of the physical traits of the family I was born into. So nature versus, versus nurture. There's no telling where you got each one, but there are definitely some places, or some things you can tell you where you got them, but there are other things that you can't tell. So look at your own lives and think about it. How much of your personality did you get from one parent or the other? Or an aunt or an uncle or someone else that influenced your life? It's really kind of interesting when you sit and look at it and analyze yourself. Thank you. <laughs>